In this video, we'll talk about the applications of 2D and 3D cell culture systems. In my earlier videos, I have talked about what is cell culture, what are the applications, what are the reagents, media used for it. So I have an entire playlist for cell culture. Do check it out and you would get the link in the i button. In this video, we'll talk about the application portion. Cell culture is really used in several labs all across the world and it allows researcher to grow cells outside of the body in an artificial settings. In this video, we'll talk about the biomedical applications of cell culture, clinical applications and biotech industry related applications of cell culture system. So let's begin this video by looking at the application of cell culture in clinical settings. Cell lines are used to diagnose diseases and one such example is the diagnosis of autoimmune diseases and one test that is performed is known as anti-nuclear antigen test or ANA test which looks for anti-nuclear antibodies present in the blood. So patients such as uh, who are suffering from systemic lupus erythematosus will show a positive ANA test. In this test, HEP two cell lines are used. If you don't know what is cell line, click on the i button. You would get the cell line related video. HEP2 cell lines are enriched in nuclear antigens. So you take samples from the patient body. One possibility is it might have these anti-nuclear antibodies. Another possibility is it doesn't have any anti-nuclear antibodies. Anyway, you put these antibodies or this patient sample on the cell culture and then do a immunofluorescence. If there is an anti-nuclear antibody, a fluorescent level secondary antibody will surely detect it and give rise to fluorescence. By looking at the fluorescent pattern, one can understand whether there is an autoimmune disorder or not, whether there is autoantibodies uh, there or not. And the fluorescence pattern actually correlates with several diseases and a doctor can understand which pattern correspond to what disease. So now in short we understood how cell culture could be used to interpret disease results. Let me give you another example. Let's say you are preparing a drug which can possibly prevent growth of cancer cells. Before this drug can be tested in several clinical trials, it has to be first analyzed in a preclinical settings. In this preclinical stage, it is generally tested on cell cultures. That's why it is really important. Cell cultures can allow the researcher to test the efficacy of a drug. So let's say this is a particular cell culture and you are testing several cancer drugs. And you want to understand which drug is the most potent one. All of these are synthetic drugs and you are wondering which one has the best effect. And after testing on the cell culture, you find that this particular drug has the maximal effect. That means you would proceed with this drug and test it on animals and then eventually it might enter a clinical trial. Recently, stem cell therapy is gaining huge popularity. And in order to perform stem cell therapy, a clinical setting requires cell culture systems. So let me example, give you an example to understand. Let's say you have a third degree burn. So in that case, you need grafts that can possibly heal and allow your recovery of that burn region in the skin. But many of the cases what happens, graft is getting rejected due to immune activation and inflammation in this area because this graft is probably taken from somebody else or some other location of your body. So there could be a problem. Now, in this case, scientists have developed stem cell therapies where they take skin cells from the same patient. They convert these skin cells with a magic cocktail to induce pluripotent stem cells. And from this induced pluripotent stem cell, they can grow artificial skin and transplant that skin into this injured area. This ensures enhanced um, recovery process and doesn't allow graft rejection because these cells are taken from the same body. So the immune system should not consider, consider it as foreign. Similar strategy can be used for uh, 
eye treatment. For example, there is an inflammation or death in the retinal cells. One can take stem cell from the same patient, convert that stem cell into retinal cells. And that is possible these days with specific morphogens and instructions that can be provided into the cell culture. And then ultimately these cells can be replacing the damaged and decaying cells in the retina that can give vision to this particular patient. How cool is that? Now thinking about specific diseases, you can think about cancer. And in cancer, let me give you one example. Tumor cells are often targeted by the NK cells because tumor cell doesn't have class 1 MHC and NK cells can target these tumor cells based on that. So obviously if you can trigger NK cell mediated response in your body, possibly you can have a healing effect on tumor. This individual here is suffering from a particular type of cancer and you can see a tumor he here. So one possibility is like you can take out the NK cells from this particular patient's body, then culture them and in that culture add certain cytokines which can activate these NK cells. This can make these NK cells proactive and that is and then further you can inject that into the same patient's body into the tumor site. That means they would be more efficient in terms of fighting the tumor when you are activating them and that is possible with the advancement of cell culture. That brings out the advantage why cell culture is crucial for medical purposes. Now let's talk about importance of cell culture in biomedical research. We are not going to delve into details, but cell culture systems are used for several fundamental scientific questions. For example, you want to learn about a localization of a protein, you can use a cell to understand where this particular protein is localized either by doing immunohistochemistry or let's say you can do it by fluorescent tagging. Let's say you want to learn whether two proteins are interacting or not in a cellular setting. So you can do that inside a cell. You can do FRET-based assays. You can also do disease modeling using this particular cells. Also you can test the effect of a drug or effect of an environmental stressor on cells and try to understand what's the detrimental effect. All of these things is possible with the advancement of cell culture. Let's say you want to test the efficacy of a drug. You can do that in cell culture. You treat it with different concentration of drug and see whether it triggers some kind of apoptosis response or not. This is just one of the example I'm giving you. Now let's talk about the uh, implications of cell culture in biotech industry. Now, biotech, in biotech industry, cell culture is now a really important part. In biotech industry, you culture cells, but in order of 1000 liter volume, where you culture, let's say, some 10 ml of cell culture, you have basically 1000 liter of cell culture in an industry setting compared to a research or a lab settings. So, for these cell cultures can allow us to develop products that are used in daily life. For example, production of insulin that is required for us. Let me break it down for you. Let's say you are a researcher and you need a antibody or let's say you need a restriction enzyme for your research work or let's say a recombinant protein is required. Now what you do is you call the industry people and you ask them to deliver a particular protein with a particular catalog number. Now that particular guy delivers it to your doorstep. But do you know what really happens in the industry? In the industry, in the bioreactor, they create these products. And in order to create these products, they need cell culture based system. For example, they are preparing an antibody. They need hybridoma cell lines, right? And that hybridoma cell lines need to be amplified in order of thousands and thousands of liters such that they can generate uh, antibodies in order of grams. And only few milligrams is delivered to your doorstep. So now we understand how this is really important in an industrial setting. In order to understand what is bioprocessing, how bioreactors work, you can click on the video in the i button. But in this video, let me give you a very quick heads up towards a 3D culture system. These days, scientists have discovered a new technique called organoid, which is a 3D culture which resembles organs. This is a, these are also known as mini organs. This has revolutionized medicine and the way we think about medicine. 
organoids has multiple applications from understanding disease mechanism to de fundamental development organoid has been a game changer in the field of medicine you can study disease mechanism toxicology development and stem cell biology regenerative medicine drug discovery and the progression of infectious disease in these in vitro 3d culture systems in a different video i'll talk about organoids in bit more details let me know whether you want a separate video or not but anyway it would be available in the i button so in this video what we learned is basically the application of cell culture in the field of biomedical research clinical application and application of cell culture in industry notes regarding this video would be available in my facebook page very soon you can get many interactive flashcard dynamic flashcard in my facebook page also in the community post so check them out as usual don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support my channel in patreon if you're an indian viewer you can support my channel in bhim upi app you can also take my unacademy courses using my code ap10 you can get a 10% discount all my social media links are provided in the description feel free to connect to me and i will be really happy to help and give any advice to you guys thanks a lot for listening see you in next video